Hi everyone, welcome back. We're going to continue our talk on ecosystems. Previously, we were just discussing the energy flow through ecosystems, specifically through different trophic levels. But now we're going to discuss another property of ecosystems, and that's what we call biogeochemical cycles. So this has to do with the fact that physical substances on Earth, or just what we would call matter, it could never escape or disappear. It gets recycled within and among ecosystems, okay? And it does that, we reuse and recycle these materials, and it does that through biological interactions, geological interactions, and also chemical interactions. So that's why it's called a biogeochemical cycle. So substances just get recycled uh, within and among each of these ecosystems. So we're gonna give um, a few examples of what type of matter gets recycled and how. So the first one we can talk about is the carbon cycle. So carbon is an energy molecule, very important molecule. So you may have heard throughout your lifetime that we are carbon-based life forms. And that's because we are, we're based on carbon. It's one of the most abundant molecules in our body. Okay. So um, where does carbon come from? Well, it exists in the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. It's in the ocean as carbonate and bicarbonate molecules. It's in rocks, and most commonly we see it in limestone in the form of calcium carbonate. Those are all abiotic factors, remember. But it's also found in organic molecules, the biotic, biotic factors, such as proteins, it's in your lipids and carbohydrates. Okay, and so what happens again is the carbon within those areas, it gets released, and it gets released in different ways. So if you look at the picture here, the uh, carbon dioxide that's in the atmosphere, plants through the process of photosynthesis will take up the carbon dioxide and create glucose. So glucose is that energy molecule. Um, it's the primary producer. It will use that glucose in order to make energy, in order to build its tissues. And then a, um, a consumer might eat the plant in order to obtain some of that glucose so that it can obtain energy. So you can see how this links back to the previous lecture we just had. Okay. Um, other animals, so once we do, we eat the glucose from another animal. It's the process of cellular respiration which releases the glucose back into the environment. So as our cells break down the glucose to make energy, we uh, remove some of the carbon and the CO2, right? Or some of the carbon and the oxygen, and that forms carbon dioxide, and we exhale it, and that gets back into the atmosphere, okay? Um, other processes like combustion, fires, can release carbon back into the atmosphere from different sources. Um, as water flows amongst the rocks, it releases carbon that I mentioned, the calcium carbonate and things that are inside of there, okay? Um, all of that can release the carbon back into the atmosphere. So take a good look, this picture's in your book, take a good look and look at all the ways that carbon then can get released back into the atmosphere. So the next one I wanna talk about is the nitrogen cycle. So nitrogen is a very essential part of proteins, nucleic acids, and chlorophyll, which is a um, substance found in plants, very important in absorbing the energy during uh, photosynthesis. So in the, it's really abundant in the Earth's atmosphere. It makes up about 78% of our atmosphere, but it's in the form of a very stable molecule, N2. So there's two molecule, two atoms of nitrogen that are bound to one another, and it makes it very stable. So that means it's hard to break apart. So it's an important nutrient. Like I said, we need it to make proteins and nucleic acids and things, but it's hard for us to just, actually it's impossible for us to just extract it from the atmosphere. So we, there needs to be other processes involved to break it apart. But then again, it'll eventually get recycled. It'll pass through different bodies and it'll eventually get recycled back into the atmosphere. So um, this nitrogen cycle requires a lot of energy and it actually takes five steps. 
Okay, so the first step, you can see number one there, is called nitrogen fixation. So in this step, it's going to take that gaseous N2 molecule and convert it to ammonia. So what it's doing is it's fixing nitrogen into a form that other organisms can use. Okay. So step two is nitrification. That's taking the ammonia or similar ion called ammonium and uh, forming it into something called nitrate. So you can see at the bottom of there, through nitrification, we're taking ammonia and ammonium and converting it into nitrate. And how does that happen? It happens through bacteria that specialize in this. And so because they specialize in it, we refer to them as nitrifying bacteria. Okay. So now this is a, also a form that can be used. So plants can assimilate this. So that's the third step, assimilation. Roots then can absorb the um, ammonium and the nitrate and the ammonia. All of that you see at the bottom there going into the soil. So the roots absorb that, and as they do, then they can incorporate it into their tissues and form proteins and other molecules that they need. Okay. The fourth step then is ammoniafication. This is converting that organic nitrogen, that means that's the compounds that the plants have just made, and it can convert it back into ammonia and ammonium ions. And so this happens when organisms that have taken up the usable form and they produce waste. So we eat plants that have the usable form and we take it into our body. We use some of it as well to make proteins and nucleic acids, but some of it gets produced in waste. For example, like urea, that's in our urine. Okay, birds will do the same, but instead of producing urea, they produce uric acid. Okay, and we expel that from our body. Okay. So these nitrogen compounds are also coming from dead organisms. So when they decompose, they release nitrogen as ammonia as well. The fifth step is denitrification. So that's the reduction of the nitrate back to the gaseous nitrogen, back into the atmosphere there, the N2. So denitrifying prokaryotes are able to reverse the action of the nitrogen fixing and the nitrifying organisms by returning the nitrogen back into the atmosphere. So there are the five steps, nitrogen fixation, Again, taking that molecule out of the atmosphere and um, converting it into ammonia and ammonium. Nitrification can then take that and convert it to um, ammonium and nitrate. Assimilation is then the plants using their roots, absorbing the ammonia, ammonium and nitrate into their tissues and incorporating it into proteins. Right? And even if consumers eat that, then we also can take up those compounds as well. Okay? Then some of that becomes waste. So in the fourth step, ammoniafication, we convert the organic nitrogen. Once it gets into the alive body, we call it organic. Okay? And we convert it back into ammonia and ammonia ions through urea and uric acid. And denitrification is taking the nitrate and reducing it back to the nitrogen gas, the N2. Oh, there goes my lights again. There we go. <laughs> All right. The last one we want to look at is the water cycle, another very important cycle um, on Earth. Water is essential to life. So water actually continuously circulates from the ocean to the atmosphere, to the land, and back to the ocean. Um, when water moves from the atmosphere to the land or the ocean, it does so in the form of precipitation, right? It rains, okay? When the water then at the ocean surface or at the soil or streams, rivers, lakes, it can evaporate. So it goes back into the atmosphere and condenses and forms clouds. Okay, so you can see, and then it can rain again, and that cycle can keep going. 
Plants, however, can take up the water that's in the soil and they conduct that water through their tissues to their leaves until it evaporates through there. That conducting of water from the roots to the leaves is called transpiration. Okay? And then again, it gets back to the atmosphere. So when water hits land, it might move through the land in the form of runoff. Okay? And then eventually get back to the ocean where it then evaporates and gets into the atmosphere, or the runoff can go into our rivers, lakes, lakes, and streams, things like that. From that water, runoff, though, water can sometimes seep into the soil and become groundwater, and it could get trapped there for a very long time. Okay? And um, that's a situation called percolation, so it can kind of percolate through the soils, okay? and eventually can actually move as groundwater and get back to our soil, our uh, streams and our rivers. The plants can take it up in the ocean. So it's all interconnected there. Um, so whether it's a solid, a liquid, or a vapor, every molecule of water eventually moves through the hydrologic cycle. Okay, that's it. Thank you, everybody. Whoop, I lost my lights again. That means it's time for me to go. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed learning about ecosystems. Bye-bye.